Would you like to learn how to build your own do-it-yourself enclosures for spiderlings and juvenile tarantulas? Then keep watching and join the Tarantula Collective. So what is the Tarantula Collective? Well, it started off as just an Instagram account where I posted pictures of my tarantulas. I quickly grew and I was having a hard time kind of keeping up with all the comments. So I thought that it would be a little easier if we started a Facebook page. So we got that Facebook page going that quickly turned into a community of people, uh, tarantula hobbyists and enthusiasts that want to share their questions, their ideas, their comments, their experience, their knowledge, as well as their photos and their feeding videos and, and all kinds of stuff. So what we decided to do was to take this a step further. Some of the questions that have been asking, like how do you build your enclosures, uh, some specific husbandry details on different species, where are they from, background information, uh, dealer reviews, things of that nature. It's a little hard to do in just a Facebook post. So uh, what we're going to do is start this YouTube channel and uh, take some more of the advanced questions or things that we would like to spend a little bit more time answering and, and kind of go in depth and make a YouTube video about it. Hopefully in the future, we also want to add videos and pictures and information from members of our group, kind of incorporate that into the YouTube channel as well. So it really will be a, a community channel. Um, there's a lot of cool things going to be happening here in the future. we got giveaways going on right now. We've got giveaways planned for the future, different kinds of contests on both Instagram, Facebook, and soon to be here on YouTube as well. So it's really going to be cross-platform social media kind of uh, community uh, where you can stay connected no matter what you use, no matter what you're on. So it, it's going to be really exciting. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is just walking you through how I make my spiraling and juvenile enclosures. I use AMAC boxes. Sometimes I, mostly I get them from the container store. Also try the different hobby shops around town or Amazon. Uh, you know, there, there's a wide variety of boxes out there. You find what fits uh, your needs the best and, you know, go from there. I'm using just one of my uh, kind of uh, long, short boxes, uh, but the same steps are, go across the board. You know, you can drill the holes on top, you can drill them on the side, you can apply a vent. It's, it's pretty basic, it's pretty easy, but I know how I was when I first started uh, learning tarantulas and getting into the hobby. I wanted somebody to walk me through step by step uh, pretty much everything that I did. So that's what I'm going to do. We're just going to have a basic kind of tutorial video. If you got some ideas for videos we can do in the future, be sure to join our Facebook page. Leave some uh, comments there or comment down below in the comments section. Uh, I'll be checking that as well. Um, subscribe to our channel if you want to be involved. We got the Instagram, we got the Facebook group, you know, however you want to be involved or across all three, that would be really cool. We're going to have some more giveaways coming up. We're going to have more contests. You know, it's, it's an exciting group to be part of. I'm glad you all have joined us. So enjoy the video. All right, well, to start off, I need to make a quick trip to the local hardware store to get some small drill bits. I can never seem to keep track of these things, and I constantly lose them. Now, what you're looking for are the two smallest drill bits that they have. Now, it doesn't really matter what kind you get since we're just drilling through acrylic, so I usually go for the cheapest brand. Now, the smallest bits they have is the 1 16th inch and the 3 32nd inch, which both are very useful. Now, if your sling is a quarter inch or smaller, then you don't want the holes to be more than half their size or there is a high risk of escape. I experiment a lot with different setups to find the one that best suits the T's needs and size. You don't have to use AMAC boxes. Any container that is clear plastic and has a secure fitting lid can be modified into an enclosure. I prefer the AMAC boxes only because they're inexpensive, easy to work with, and come in sizes that are ideal for tees from the smallest sling to juvenile, fossorial, terrestrial, or arboreals. Now this is your basic small dram vial that slings are shipped in when you order from Fear Not Tarantulas. These come in different sizes and make great enclosures for your smallest slings. I fill them a little more than halfway up with substrate and poke holes in the lid for ventilation. I find your basic push pin works great for this and makes holes large enough to circulate some air but small enough that your little slings can't squeeze through them. Once a sling is about a half to three quarters of an inch, I house them in these little AMAC boxes. The shallow and deep lids both work great, cost under $2, and you can drill holes or install a vent. 
They are great for all types of slings, and there's even extra tall ones that are perfect for your fossorial or arboreal species. Here's a few more examples of enclosures you can make using clear plastic boxes. The best part of this enclosure is that it was free. It was just the packaging for something else that I had purchased. Throw in a piece of cork, hot glue a water dish to the side, add a few ventilation holes, and you have an excellent arboreal enclosure. Here we have the terrestrial enclosure that came with a complete package tea I bought from Fear Not Tarantulas. It's nice because it has plenty of cross ventilation with no holes in the lid which helps keep in humidity and is made with a thicker, more high quality plastic than the AMAC boxes I normally use. Moving on to the juvenile enclosures, this is your basic terrestrial setup. I ventilate the tops because space is limited and I keep these stacked right next to each other so cross ventilation isn't quite possible. If you have the room to give them space, cross ventilation is ideal. I like the taller boxes for the fossorial species as it gives them more depth to burrow and space to web up an entrance that isn't disturbed when I open up their enclosure. For arboreals like avicularia that tend to web up the top of their enclosures, I use this setup. That way I can have access to the bottom to feed and water without tearing up their web tunnels. Cross ventilation is key and I avoid venting the top to help keep in humidity. For species like Postolotheria that make their homes at the base of the cork, I use a top entry setup again to minimize the disturbance. And the star of the video, the basic terrestrial juvenile enclosure with cross ventilation. This is one of my favorite setups. Now to begin. First you'll need your drill bits, I have the 1 16th inch and the 3 32nd inch bits. Safety glasses, because you can never be too safe, and a drill. I start off with placing the enclosure on its side so I can come straight down with the drill. I usually leave the lid on them because the plastic isn't the strongest and any extra support is ideal. Take your time when drilling through the plastic and once the bit has punctured clear through, pull the drill back out. If you come all the way down with the drill, the chuck will leave nasty scratches on your display. You can also run a very high risk of cracking or breaking your enclosure if the full weight of the drill comes crashing down onto the side, so be mindful. You can use a ruler or wrap a rubber band around the box to keep your line straight, but personally I don't do that as it seems like more work than it's worth. I just use my thumb to help guide the drill bit to the point I want to hole and drill away. I just eyeball the placement to try to keep the line straight, but inevitably you go off course from time to time. They're just air holes, so functionality outweighs design, and I have yet to have a tarantula complain about their ventilation not being perfectly aligned. For the hide, I just get a small cork bark tube. This one I had cut in half and planned on using both sides in different arboreal enclosures, but so far I would only used one. So I'm going to cut a little off the bottom of this unused piece for my hide. You don't have to use a power saw, you can use a small hand saw, a dremel, I've even used a steak knife before. Whatever you use, just be careful not to cut yourself. Then I examine the piece and find which side seems more natural and aesthetically pleasing. You can even hot glue some moss or fake plants on at this point. Recently I've been using dual layers for substrate. The bottom layer is a 50-50 mix of topsoil and cocoa fiber with a little sand mixed in. The top layer I just use straight cocoa fiber. Anytime I'm setting up a new enclosure, I always make sure to clean it out very well. Here I am using isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle. I like to clean with it as it sanitizes the enclosure and the alcohol will evaporate as it dries. I wipe down the enclosure very well, inside and out, and make sure to get in all the corners and crevices. What you don't see on camera is that I also take it to the sink and rinse it out really well with warm water and dry it out. Then I give it the sniff test to make sure no fumes or chemical smells are present. For the bottom layer of substrate, I use the 50-50 topsoil cocoa fiber mix. This substrate is good at retaining moisture and keeping a nice humidity level in the enclosure. 
I add a little sand to help with draining excess water, but the sand also helps a little to inhibit the growth of mold or fungus. Now this substrate is also good if your tea decides to burrow. It holds its shape much better than cocoa fiber alone and gives the tea the ability to make strong tunnels under the surface. For the top layer, I use plain cocoa fiber that you can buy by the brick at most pet stores. Make sure you pack down the cocoa fiber some to give your tea a solid surface to walk on. You don't want to pack down to an extreme where it is compressed as that can make it more difficult for them to dig and burrow. Just find a happy medium to pack it down. Then just add your hide. I like to position them up against the sides so I can peek into their burrow. I pack some substrate in tight on the sides of the hide to help hold it in place without the need of hot glue. Hot glue is fine to hold cork bark until you need to rehouse them and they're inside their hide. I want it to be secure but easily removable when the time comes. This is my favorite decoration, sphagnum moss. I buy a compressed brick of this moss at my local pet store for around $5 and it lasts quite a while. I break it up a little bit and then push it down in on the sides of the hide. Not only does this give it a very natural look, but it is functional as well. This uh, dissuades the tea from burrowing down the side of the hide and raises the chances it will actually use the hide the way I set it up. And I just break up some more moss and let it fall as it will into the enclosure to really give it that forced floor look. Now you can also use dried leaves, rocks, twigs, things like that. Just stay away from anything cedar or pine and remember that less is usually more. Now I found this skull on Halloween clearance at the craft store when I bought the container. I just had to use it since it had that spider on its head. Now again, I'm pushing some moss behind the skull, not just because it will help it look more natural, but also to keep crickets or other feeders from hiding back there when it's time to feed. Now I get these little plastic succulents from the same craft store and they're around a dollar a piece. I just snip off most of the stem and leave just enough so that it will stay in place. Drop in a little water dish and we're good to go. We have a nice looking do-it-yourself enclosure that costs less than $10 in materials and is worthy of display. Always put the lid on once you're done and make sure there is enough clearance for your tea to explore and not get pinned between the top of the hide and the lid. And here is the finished product, the do-it-yourself enclosure that costs less than $10 and looks amazing. You can apply these steps to any of the AMAC style boxes and decorate and ventilate to suit your needs and tastes. If this was a helpful video, please hit that like button as it will help other hobbyists find the video down the line. Be sure to subscribe so you will know when we upload our next video and leave any questions or comments down below. If you want to see more, you can follow us on Instagram or join our Facebook group. We would love to have you.